Location plays a very important role in our lives, and it's often a discussion we have with friends and family when we first speak to them. Where are you? The concept of location is one that's developed from an early age. Stand next to mum. Put your plate on the bench. As we get older, we develop the language of location. Words like forward, backward, above, below, outside, inside, in front of, and behind are all examples of words that children very quickly learn and understand. As they get older, the language of a location becomes more sophisticated and includes cumbrance directions. Distance also becomes a factor at this stage with instructions both as to the direction they are required to travel and how far they have to go. The use of maps becomes very important for children as their initial maps represent things that are familiar to them in their lives, such as their bedroom and their route to school. As they build their skills, they add scales, which tell the distance, and also a grid, which allows them to give precise position locations on the maps. Booker tells us that early ideas of position with a grid usually follow an alphanumeric system. These are typical of identification of specific seats in theatres and sports stadiums. From our, our resource from Scoodle, as you can see, we are using an alphanumeric system to be able to find location points on our map. My choice of online resource is one which shows the key fixes I'm looking to enhance in the topic. It makes excellent use of grid points showing and teaching how they're able to be used to navigate around a map. The Victorian curriculum point shown here tells us that children need to create and interpret simple grid maps to show position and pathways. I feel that this resource makes excellent use of both of those things as it allows the children to locate different things that are required on our map. The next part of our online resource makes good use of labels around the axes of the map. It looks at the issues of scale and compass direction, allows the user to know approximately how far they need to travel on the map and how far to the next destination. Also like the fact that it's not a, a, not a game playing resource and allows the user to explore the rainforest using the concept of learning and, and the setting keeps an interesting aspect for children using the resource. An important issue in the teaching of this topic is one of language. Every day, children are hearing and using terms such as go left, go right, backwards or forwards. To better understand the topic, they need to develop the language of location. Jorgensen and Dahl tell us the language of location includes words used to describe objects in relation to others. Direction is another important aspect of geometry and location. After spending their lives learning left and right, they suddenly have to use the points of the compass. Once, Once these, these are mastered, mastered, further complications are put into the mix, with the compass going from four points to 16 points. Booker advises us that as children extend their understanding, they move from only using direction to add distance. With the use of more commercial maps, children are introduced to the notion of scale. The resources studied address these issues as they take the children through them one at a time and allow them to gain knowledge required to be comfortable using them and to translate that to other real-world situations. The resource allows students to gain knowledge of the language of the location, use the points of the compass, navigate around the map, and use the scale to ensure they are travelling the correct distance. The Victorian curriculum at level 4, which is shown here, tells us we need to use simple scales, legends, and directions to interpret information contained in basic maths. From some of our difficulties that we're likely to face, as we can see, we talk about language, as we have discussed here already, the talk about a reference point on a map to see where we are, and they talk about the orientation of an object. From whose point of view are we looking? The reader, so it's my conclusion or... that our online resource study today is an excellent, excellent feature, has excellent features to allow students to not only explore maps, to get to know them, to be comfortable with them, but they allow them then to be able to translate those skills into real life situations and actually have some real world experiences. They can be out in the environment that they're looking at the map, they can feel the wind in their hair, they can be walking up and down and see the streets as they follow them. They can follow them around the schoolyard. They can s interpret and understand the features that are shown on the map. The other great thing about um, maps and location is it certainly allows those students who are not as good with numbers as some to have the chance to shine in a maths topic that they never ever thought they would. And it gives them the opportunity to be able to feel so good about themselves when they can follow a map, when they can get to the end result, and they can make differences to um, their own lives exactly the same way as others. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, all the very best, and talk soon.